on the day that I decide to film and there are five construction trucks parked outside my house. Hi, how are you? I hope you've been very well. This week I have quite a few errands to run so we're gonna do a quick get ready with me. I'm gonna have to ask you to please ignore any beeping, reversing, dropping and clanging of metals onto the street. There are four construction cars and trucks parked outside my house today. Also, if I start yelling, just know that it's out of rage and not in an attempt to be heard. I do have a microphone. I, I just also have rage. The worst thing is, I know they're moving off to the actual location that they're supposed to be doing work at. So by the time I'm finished this video, they'll all be gone. But I can't start later because I've got places to be. So let's catch up. How have you been? I feel like when I get distracted by difficult makeup or trying to explain how makeup is done, I, I don't really talk to you. But today's makeup is not going to be that glamorous. It's going to be basically what I wear to work, what I wear when I run errands. I've run out of the black mascara, so I'm going to be using browns. And since I have no other time to film this week, I am filming this makeup look. My foundation lately has been a bit of a whirlwind of disaster. I've run out of niacinamide, and so I feel like not only does my foundation apply patchy, which isn't the niacinamide's fault, I think it's the weather. I can see blotchiness and unevenness in my foundation, and I do have to exfoliate and do a mask. I'll probably do one later tonight. So when I tell you that I'm using the Estee Lauder Stay In Place Double Wear Makeup, it's not a reflection of the makeup, it's a reflection of my skincare currently and the actual weather changes outside. Because ordinarily, this makeup is beautiful. This foundation. Remember when I was deciding on foundation shades and I said that the 2N1 would have suited me better in the winter because it was lighter and the 3N1, I was worried about it not being my skin color during the winter time when I'm not tanned. Turns out that the 3N1 was my correct skin color. It's just, I was worried. Because when I go out or off to work or whatever, my foundation now, the 2N1, it's a bit pale. Woo! <laughs> Which means that I have to endure it, but it's also good for me because it means that I've definitely gone up a shade. For concealer, I'm using the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the color Chantilly. This is really great if you have oily skin and it does, in fact, stay matte and it blends beautifully. I say that in every video, that's because it does. So, while I do that, let's catch up quickly. I have got a new job. Again, ignore the trucks, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. I have a new job, which means that I'm not free to film most of the week. I have my days off, which is yesterday and today, and today again doubles up as an errands day. So I have a new job and it's pretty cool, but I've also changed industries. So that industry that I loved so much where I was a lighting technician and I worked on cool installations, no more. I do have a video coming. I have one more thing to film and that video is coming and it's going to be beautiful and I hope you like it because I actually I'm in love with the concept of it. Like when I decided to start filming, I started filming this video in March and I've been grabbing different uh, elements of footage, different installations that I've worked on and I have one more to go get before I start editing that video and before you see the kind of work that I was doing. Uh, I just don't have time to do it at the moment because again schedules clash with my new job and my friend who wants to come with me her job but i will get that video up as soon as i can and i'm excited for it because i feel like the last time i was creative with any kind of video it was when i was traveling so this is going to be sort of like that like a vlog style um video something that i'm really proud of and i'm really excited to share with you and without giving too much away i feel like it's such a nice way to say goodbye to the industry because i finally fulfilled a dream that i had since i was 16. it just takes up most of my days and i end up doing all of my editing before work <laughs> but yeah that's been the biggest shift um on my end a new change in careers and new schedules but that video that i want to get up is my pride and joy everything that I have to show for the last 12 years of working in the industry I studied. I'm using the Laura Mercier Double Blur Translucent Loose Setting Powder, Double Blur, Ultra Blur, Translucent Loose Setting Powder to just set all of it. What else has been happening? Oh, a while ago I talked about a fitness journey that I was going on, a health journey where I was trying to gain weight back and work out and, you know, gain weight the healthy way. So that's been fun. I've been documenting progress shots, like photo shots, not really workouts or anything. So I'll make a video about that maybe 
in a year, not a year from now, but a year from when I started, which is March. And I'll show you the progress shots. I'll explain what I was eating and stuff. But the short version of that journey is I'm really excited and I'm really happy to see progress so far. It's been a couple weeks and I didn't expect to actually see progress so far. I didn't expect to see it so soon. And I have been, and it's been great. Unfortunately for me, when it comes to food, I have a big um, sweet tooth. So when it comes to controlling how much sweet stuff that I'm eating, I am not good at it and I don't care. And that's a problem. But other than that, it's been pretty successful and I'm so excited to share that with you when it's time. Bronzer, I'm using the Benefit Hula Bronzer like I have been because it's beautiful. Applying it to the dip of my cheekbone and bringing it up into my temple and round in circle emotions to blend it upward as opposed to making a jagged harsh line down. I don't know if it displays too well when I do bronzers and blushes because on the monitor they don't really show up. They do show up in person but I'm not very hard-handed when I go in with makeup. I do things very gently, very softly, very subtly. So you can always tell that I'm not bare face. Like you can tell that I wear makeup but I don't do too much of it especially when I go out for errands. Sometimes it's Actually, always, I find. It's in the subtleties that really stand out. Plus, I made a video a while ago. This video is going to be everywhere, by the way. It's just me talking and talking. Enjoy. I made a video. It was one of my first videos about color theory. And I closed it off talking about how, because I am a lighting engineer, I'm a lighting technician, I can talk to you about how makeup is affected in different... <laughs> Hey, how makeup is affected in different light settings. Overcast days are okay. But days where it's just sun and no clouds and stuff in the sky, it is the worst thing for certain types of makeup. And maybe I'll make a video about it another day where I explain why you look scary in the middle of the day, but you look so good at night when you're wearing powders. But today is an overcast day so I can get away with powders. I also apply it under my chin to separate my jawline from my actual neck. I'm wearing a turtleneck today, so my chin is longer than where my turtleneck is, so it's not really a problem, but I normally feel like I look goofy if I don't do this step. I'm using the same bronzer on a small, well, it's not small, it's kind of fluffy brush to go in with a very light nose contour. I say it in a lot of my videos, I don't reshape my nose with my nose contour, I just make it more of a cohesive look so it doesn't look like there's a big circle of white in the middle of my face. So we'll call it a light dusting of a contour, using the same bronzer, creating a very subtle shadow there on my nose. And a little bit under my lip because we like to pretend we have full lips. My blush is the Dolce Vita by NARS and I apply that between the dip of the bronzer on my cheekbone and where highlight usually goes. I don't apply it on the balls of my cheeks, I've mentioned before why, but if you missed that video, because of the shape of my face and I wanna say my age, applying blush here on the balls of my cheeks looks good when I'm doing this, but it doesn't look so good when I'm not doing that and it brings my face down. So I apply it up here and it brings up my cheekbones a bit. Well, it doesn't bring them up, it just, gives me some color. Before I go in with my colored mascara-like eyebrow product, I do brush everything out to try and give it a shape before it just sets everything in place. I use a spoolie for that step. It doesn't have anything on it. Sometimes it does and it upsets me deeply, but just brushing out the hairs that the foundation may have clumped together and giving yourself a shape so that you can see what you have to work with. I don't have much to work with. Taking the Benefit Gimme Brow mascara-ish thing, whoops, that's a lot of product, brushing through my eyebrow hairs, trying to stand up some of them so they have more of a shape, but honestly, the shape is my fault. <laughs> For today's look, I'm gonna do something that I've been doing at work lately. Oh, actually, I might do something more. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. I'm using the color Nude. Wow, I just went in and didn't show you a thing. Born This Way, the Natural Nudes palette by Too Faced. I'm using the color Nude Oh! Now you're gonna wanna make sure to put your fingers in all of the other colors as you drop your palette. Anyway, nude. Here. Using that, I'm covering my entire eyelid area, including above the brow bone into the eyebrow, essentially. Not, not to start off, I start off on the eyelid and on the outer crease, and I just blend it up and in so that the darkest parts of it are still on the outside, but as you blend them upwards, they soften, making sure to get that color distributed every single where, everywhere on that eye. 
and I do bring it out past the eyebrow a bit to give it a more of an elongated shape. I have some beautiful things planned in the next few months coming up like in my personal life and I'm so excited for them and we'll talk about them when the time comes but Halloween is coming and I keep thinking like what do I want to do? I've always struggled with creating new things for Halloween. I've always struggled with coming up with new things but now my hair isn't going to clash with a lot of character designs so I might I don't know what would you like to see? What would you like to learn for Halloween? Prosthetics, body painting, beauty, glam, sort of but scary what would you like to learn slightly more dense for the next fluffy brush i use it in all my videos and i'm taking it underneath the eye and now i'm going to use the color cocoa cocoa here with that fluffy dense brush on the outer crease and i'm going to create a classic eye keeping the darkness on the outside making sure that i'm blending it and buffing it out nicely and keeping the inside light we're going to put a bit of a highlight shade on the inside in a minute but concentrating this on the outer v and buffing it up towards the brow bone you can extend this and elongate it as much as you want i accidentally just did it quite a bit so i'm just going to go with it and bringing it underneath the eye as well on just the outside part of it but yeah halloween last year i wanted to do something big for halloween and i couldn't find the time because i didn't i didn't plan my time properly so i ended up just doing some avant-garde painting halloween-esque body painting but i feel like this year i have the luxury of asking you who watch my videos what would you like to see for halloween are any of you going to any parties or do you just want to watch halloween content we don't really have Halloween in Australia, but I became a makeup artist because of special effects makeup and prosthetics and everything So I could teach step by step how to apply and paint prosthetics I could teach how to create prosthetics on the go I can't exactly teach you how to create prosthetics they use in film I mean, I know how to do it in theory, but in order to buy those products and create it would take me months But yeah, I can do makeshift on the go prosthetics prosthetics that I've used in a few short films that I've worked on or show you some tips and tricks on how to make some makeup last all night did i just put shadow on my shirt i'm gonna take a pencil brush now with that color cocoa and go underneath the eye a little more close to the lash and a little more concentrated just to bring that color down and connect it to the bottom of that extension we like cohesion here on this channel using my morphe 35xo natural flirt palette there's one shade that i use it's called come here often it's this one and I use it to highlight. It's a matte pale nude. I go in with my fluffy brush that I went in with nude, poke it into that inner corner and it does the work for me because the blush, the blush, the brush is fluffy. Oh no, scattered light. But yeah, that's how I do that, which makes it less time consuming to blend when I just flick it outward. It just kind of sits where it has to and it saves me quite a bit of time. So you poke it into that middle and poof, problem solved. And I do make that pretty white because I do like I like the way that my eyes look with classic eye looks. But yeah, Halloween, what would you like to see? I'd like to do something worthy this year because last year I felt like I was rushing it. I had just come back from Greece. I didn't have time to plan and then I was working on a new exhibition. It was very, very chaotic. I want to do good Halloween stuff. I love special effects. I love body painting. I like all of that stuff very much. So. Let me know if there's something you'd like to learn, if you are going to parties, if, if you're from a country that celebrates Halloween. I'm going to do some things anyway, like I'm going to come up with characters as well. By the way, I for just forgetting to tell you what I'm doing, with a smaller pencil brush, I'm highlighting underneath the center of the brow. I've applied the darker bronze for my nose contour just under the front of the brow, so in the center of the brow is where I'm going to do my highlight today. And I'm going to make a little exclamation point on my nose. This is matte, so if you're worried about looking oily, you're not gonna. The eyeliner and mascara combo that I've been using is the Fenty Fly Liner in Big, in Big Truffle. Is that what it's called? In Big Truffle, the brown, and the Better Than Sex Mascara in Chocolate. Let's try and do a legitimate... Oops. I always cut this part out because I can never do it in front of my camera. Let's see if we can do it today. The problem is when I don't actually care about my eyeliner, it turns out perfectly. When I do care about it, it will not turn out. Okay, so from underneath the top lash line, basically where the bottom lash line angles up, that's where I create my line. And then where the crease is here, I'll draw a line. I don't do this, but I'm telling you this is how you can do it if you're learning how to do eyeliner and you have a hooded eye or a semi-hooded eye. You draw a line down from where that crease is and you extend it to that point. And then from that crease, you bring it down 
I typically bring it just before the center of my eye and then you just fill it in. I'll fix that. It's because my elbow's not touching the desk and it, it needs to. And I typically bring it higher as well. So I'll make mine pretty thick and then I connect it. I might bring the liner from the lash line from the center up. I'm taking an angle brush that I usually use for the specific job of thinning out liner and my Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Dipping into it, like swiping one side and then the other, thinning it out on the back of my hand, and then taking, there we go, making it thinner, like pointier at the end, and with whatever's residue on the brush, without re-dipping it into the concealer, whoops, blending it down so you can seamlessly create that absence of color. I'm gonna do my other eye off camera because I struggle with my left eye enough as it is. Now, because we used a cream, we used that concealer, under here is wet, so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take fluffy brush. Actually, yes, the fluffy brush that we used with the color Cocoa, we're gonna not take any extra product on it, but we are gonna dab in that area. What this is gonna do is it's gonna diffuse the brightness of the concealer so it doesn't look too stark up against the liner and the previous shadow blending that we did. It's gonna take that drama out of it, but it's not going to be overpowering and it's not gonna ruin the shape of your eyeshadow that you've put before. Then, with the dense pencil brush and no extra product, remember there should be product from that same color Cocoa, there should be product already on this brush. So take it from underneath and swipe it up. And if you're worried about not matching with the other eye, you can do that here as well, just to give it that little bit of extra something. Actually, what I'm gonna do, now that I've cleaned that up, I'm gonna take the eyeliner again and just Let's see if I can do this on camera. There we go. Um, yeah. Okay, let me just explain what that was. So, because I've got a semi-hooded eye, if I bring the eyeliner from the top lid, you're going to lose it in the hood. So I had to connect it from the bottom lash line up to the top as seamlessly as I can and try not to make it too thick or else it'll look like a wave, like, a, like the letter U. But in order to be able to see it, I do have to connect it from that bottom lash line. So that's just what I did there. I should do it on this side too. But I liked the way this turned out so much more. For this final step, I'm taking the color truffle in that palette and an angle brush that's different from the concealer one. I'm tapping into that and bringing it just underneath that lower lash line in the outer corner and I'm connecting it to the bottom of the eyeliner just to add a bit of darkness here on the outside i'm only tapping it like i'm just touching it down and bringing it out a little bit it's not reaching the center of my eye we are going to blend it that way like we are going to blend it to the center of the eye but we don't need to apply that much product just from underneath the lash line connecting it to the liquid eyeliner and creating that darker line it's not going to match the eyeliner color but it's not supposed to i'm then taking the brush the pencil brush from before blending out towards the middle and also out a little bit what this is going to do is it gives the illusion of a cohesive look and it does bring a little more pop to the eye and if you want with the residue on that brush you can shade a little bit on that brow bone to deepen and darken the shape of that classic eye you don't have to do it i don't always do it but it does give it a little something extra. And because I went in with the concealer, I'm not putting any more product on the angle brush, but because there's already a little product on there, I'm just covering up any more white spots of concealer so it doesn't distract. With the same highlighting shade and pencil brush you were using before for the inside part of the eye, take that again and just make sure that it really, really pops. I think I just mentioned it before, I'm not going in with an inner waterline shade because I don't have one, so I'm using the Better Than Sex Mascara in Chocolate and mascara-ing my eyelashes. I always forget how much product is actually on these brushes. There is a lot of product on here. So if you're someone who has smaller lashes or thinner lashes, you might want to scrape the product onto the side of the bottle before you apply because it's not going to distribute nicely with the length of your lash, it's going to clump and make your lashes hate you. Apply on the top and on the bottom. For lips, I was gonna go in with the color Thick by Fenty Beauty. I have a sample of their lipstick. This is the color. Yeah, I just feel like it's too warm for this look, for me anyway. So, I'm not gonna use that. Instead, I'm gonna tap onto my lip the color Blankety by MAC, which is almost finished and I should get a new one. I'm not gonna put any lip liner and make my lip bold. I'm just going to 
Oh, I hope I don't hate this. Tap some color onto the lip just so it doesn't look like I have nothing going on. <sighs> Fine, I guess we're lining. I'm gonna take the lip liner in stone by MAC and just on the outsides, create a gradient. All right, so we'll line the bottom part of the lip. All right, I guess we're lining all of it. I had this liquid lip that I, I was gonna use in my last video and I, I think I left it at my friend's or I lost it on the train. That's what I would have used. Okay, just to blend everything together and make sure that lip liner stays beneath the lipstick. I'm blotting on more lipstick color on top of it, not distributing too much color, but just keeping it blunt. Not blunt, subtle. For setting spray, I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Oh, I did that. So close to my face, it went up my nose. While that dries, my hair, I washed it and I curled it yesterday, but then I slept. So I don't really know what to do with it. I do have a texture spray, so I might go in with that later. I feel like it's getting too long. I cut it maybe a month ago. I feel like it's getting too long. I wonder how I would look with it even shorter. I have a dry volume and texture spray by Living Proof. It's a sample that I got from the Mecca here. So like as far as texture sprays go, I haven't used them. My hairdressers use them on me. And like, they're not dry shampoos, they're just texture sprays. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm gonna pin majority of it back. The only unfortunate thing about having short hair is that my hair is very thick. So I'm trying to find a hairstyle that I can wear as somebody with thick hair because the long hair, what happens when I have long hair is it gets really heavy. And I feel like I can't make it look good no matter what I try. And when I have short hair, it's very bulky, very... I don't know how to explain it, but I keep hearing how people just want thick hair and they wish they had thick hair. Let me tell you something about thick hair. It's not all it seems to be like, yeah, it's great because you can do a lot with it and you can get that extra volume. But I feel like that only happens when hairdressers style thick hair because it's not voluminous. It's very heavy. So what ends up happening is the top of your head is flat. Does anybody here have thick, short hair? Should I go shorter? Uh, we'll see. That's it. That's how I'm going out today. That's how I'm doing my errands. Thank you for catching up with me. It's been fun. Tell me about you. What have you been up to? What have you been doing? Because I just, I feel like as much as I come on here every week and I talk to you, I'm talking to you about makeup. How are you? As always, everything that I've used will be listed in the description and I hope I was able to teach you something new which is what I'm used to saying, but today was a get ready with me. Thanks for catching up with me. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure and leave it a like. And if you'd like to see more, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mwah.